Yeah, y'all are getting old enough where some of you know you have to take all these precautions. I may not need this stool, but I, if I do need it, it better be here. I, I'm supposed to go check my hip Thursday. I already know what's wrong. I, I, my butt's out of joint. I just need them to fix it. <laughs> you know, it, while ago Steve was talking about getting his vaccination, and I think about most of you in here, you've been vaccinated against what's hurting us a lot worse than COVID, and that's sin. Sin in America is rampant today. And because we've accepted the Lord and been baptized with fire, hey, we're baptized against the worst thing that can happen. Part of what I'm going to talk about is when we're supposed to get out of this. It's a lot closer than most of us realize. <clears throat> I uh, think about Phil Robertson. He lived right off the Washita River, probably about 50 miles from where I was raised. So we may have common genetics. Louisiana and Arkansas is kind of noted for that. You know, I started out with nothing, and uh, I still have most of it. I think most of it could probably say that. Um, yeah, I, one of the things the guy said this week, if, what would you call a life on top of your head? you call him homeless. Well, that's one thing I haven't been. I've had a home and most of us do. There are countries where people don't have homes. Uh, I think what's gonna happen in the future is not gonna hurt them as bad on the earth as it hurt people like us used to all of the different uh, conveniences. Uh, See, I think that was all I had there. When I was going to mention that and I didn't have to struggle too much to get up here some, but I was reading something the other day and it so fit me. It said, I finally got my head together and now my body's falling all to pieces. That's kind of, I think if God wanted me to bend over and touch my toes, I can bend, but I can't touch my toes. I think he would have made them grow on my kneecaps. <laughs> When Kyle asked him to speak, I didn't really know what to speak about. I heard him while going, I thought he was talking about somebody else. My dad used to say whenever I'd get started and start talking and talking, he said, I think you were vaccinated with a big trolling deal. That's because it's just going on and on and on. But I told him I'll do a little about the company. I think people have seen a lot about that. And there's one issue I want to address at the end that is on us right today, and I don't I know it took me a little bit to really grasp the severity of where we're at in the flesh and here in this country, and I want to address that at the end. So I tell you, another thing I may have to mention too, I thought I was going to get by without my allergy, but if I have to keep wiping my nose, well, y'all understand, maybe somebody will learn how to do that better, I don't know. So my testimony is pretty short, but she asked me if I wanted to give that. Once I was lost and now I'm saved. That's the basic testimony I saved when I was a teenager at a little church up in Arkansas. I must admit that I am, for the lack of a better word, hard-headed, and God's had to be like the old mule sometimes that minded well if you got his attention. He had just sometimes he has to use a two before. <clears throat> it's not easy for men and especially for me to talk about things like this, personal things like the family, the Lord, your relationship and all. Sometimes when you do that, it sounds like you're lifting yourself up, and that's not my intention whatsoever. I read this a while back uh, whenever we, I made the speech at, uh, at the Top Hand Award because I think it's so important. I, for many years, I never realized it, and I thought, you know, we need to kind of be quiet and not stand up and speak up. But God said this in Mark 5, 14 to 16. He said, you're the light of the world. He just got through saying you're the salt of the world. So we're supposed to be that. You're the light of the world. City that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick so that it'll light the whole house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All you guys are Christian and ladies here, I'm sure. And... Uh, that's a message to all of us. Let our light shine to God's glory. I was born smack over, as he said. I, I don't think I was hatched. I was within about 50 foot of the red light in smack over back in 1940. And uh, I had a pretty good childhood. We did all kind of stuff. I was thought about being old back then. And since I've been in West Texas, people old enough to be my granddad would say, back in my 20s, there comes the old dick. And I thought, my gosh, 
he's old as my granddad and he's called me old dick for some reason. I went to college just for two years. Actually, I went down where Phil Robinson's from, went to Louisiana Tech, he wasn't there then. But after two years, I decided that I wasn't getting enough from college. I need to get married and get gone. So I found my wife, Amelia, and I'm so thankful I did. We've been married over 60 years. It's a good time for me to mention my wife, Amelia, my daughter, Diane, secretary in the office, uh, Candace Joyner, uh, Shane Louder, who kind of controls our, keeps us from betting and putting money in things we shouldn't put it in, usually. I'm telling us where to put it. Matt, who's my youngest son, and then Teresa does our work with Bubba doing our fit, our political, trying to, it's a hard thing to figure out because when people lie, you think everybody is the best friend you could have up there. We're trying to find out who really is the best friend we can have. <coughs> the doctor never anticipated what's happened to life today in the company. When we got married, the kids we have living out here, uh, it differs to Arkansas. The kids certainly are thankful we moved to West Texas before we had kids. I moved out here to work for Dixie Electric. I'd worked for him in 1957 during the summer. And I went back to work for him. I had an uncle that was one of the key people there and he wanted, really wanted somebody to make his work a little lighter. I moved to Odessa after moving to Wicket and working for Dixie. We moved a year later to Odessa in 62 and that's when Diane was born. 64, I left Dixie and started a company called Star Electric with two partners. People back home were pushing me to come home, and I told them I, would, I, I either need to start this company or go and go home because they were pushing me so hard. So we started it, and we were in it for till 1964. <coughs> From 64 to 68, I left Star and then started Salisbury. Uh, I had one pickup and, uh, and and one helper and the tools and stuff that I got out of Star. I took a third of what we had. Actually, I got less than a third, but it was enough because I wanted to be out on my own. Took those companies we had, Salisbury, and then one we formed later called Salcon, which was a general construction company. We formed it in 1980. After 10 or 12 years, people have been pushing me to do that. We took those and, and a couple of other little companies we had, merged them together into something called Salisbury Companies. They kind of related it all together. And, People were getting confused, so we just made one heading with different divisions to it. Over the last 53 of the 60 years we've been out here, I've been blessed to grow a company, and I'll say I, it's actually we, because the last several years I've had very little to do with it. Grown it from a one employee in a pickup truck to a nationwide construction company, and I say peak manpower of 5,000, this would be like I was talking last year. We've certainly not had that in the last year. Like most of y'all, we've had to cut way, way back. The company was built with five core values, safety, work ethic, integrity, faith, and community service. There are others that those pretty well cover the other things that are in it. They grew at breakneck speed from about the late 90s up until, well, till recently. It just keeps growing and growing and we spread out. Of course, we're doing all this. God's the one that's opening the doors. We know that. Salisbury did some of the biggest oil and gas construction projects in the state. A lot of them had to do with CO2 and then do it putting in an expander plant. I think we put more of them in than any other company, so I'm told. If you really want to know about the company, you need to ask the janitor. Sometimes I know less about what's going on than they do. It's important to stress that this was a result of a lot of people. I, I'm going to talk about the family because they're important. My wife and me, yes, she worked at managing everything in the house and she's done excellent uh, while we were working to grow the business. But one thing I wanted to mention, back when we started, because my work hours were 70 to 80 hours, sometimes more, and working seven days mostly, I didn't get a lot of time off. She kept the kids in, when they were young all in church every Sunday. Seldom was I around for that, and that was really important. And I'm thanks for doing that. Uh, yeah, I've, I know she thought back then she was going to wring my neck sometimes, but you know, we, I just thought the work, work in the field was more important at the time. Obviously, uh, God has blessed it, but uh, I'm sure glad the kids were raised in church. The four kids after took much schooling whenever they started to get ready to take over the company. 
they went through a lot learning and schooling and you know to learn how you be how to be a leader they didn't understand when we wanted to have boards of directors because we'd never had anything like that before that's one thing that's helped us to grow we have a lot of different perspective and a lot of people and they've all bought into that well and have run the company very well we look for all employees with talent integrity a hard work ethic and that have values commensurate with ours we don't always get that, but mostly we do, and that's the reason they like the company. So the job is usually one's home away from home. So our company strive to function as a family to the extent we can do that. Mutual concern, care, and respect amongst all employees as well as the customers is the order of the day. Financial success of the company has allowed us to actually do a lot of things for the community. We've done it for political things and Christians and all. We've been very fortunate for that, and I think God intended for us to take part of what we had and do that with it, do and, and help help the nation, help the, the community around here, and even particularly one thing is to help Israel. <clears throat> I've got a list here. I'm not going to go over a, a bunch of things that we've done. That's not all of them. Probably won't be all. Sometimes these things just pop up when you have hurricanes, you have uh, floods, and all. And, we know we're going to have more of those now than we've ever had before. So we said those the last days are going to increase. Think about Lake Charles. They had three, just kind of one right after another and hitting them one way or another. I had a guy who was down helping feed them and said they couldn't even cook their food. People that had nice homes and all lost them and said they were standing here crying with us being able to cook food for them. We, we're for a little bit like a third world country and we're not used to that here. That's coming again. When the church goes out, it's gonna be pretty bad. A few years ago, it's a couple of things I was gonna read here, it's actually three of them little stories. <laughs> One thing that I've learned, and I, I can read late a thousand stories, but I picked these three out because they kind of teach character and, it, and I would say every one of us learned from others. <laughs> A few years ago, Obama said to business owners concerning their businesses, and you've all heard that, it wasn't that many years ago. So you didn't build that. He wasn't speaking of what I was thinking about when he said it, because I believe you're telling the truth, but not in the way you think you are. I have to agree with his regarding most businesses and endeavors, but what he thought was that the government did it when I knew that people did it. Owners and people working with them all built it. He tried to convince people that the government was responsible for such successes because they wanted to take more of it. I'm not sure we're not even worse now than we were then. Most of us know that in such regard, government is much more of an impediment. And uh, I was reminded of that last night when they were telling all the regulations they're fixing to put back on us. In ways he doesn't seem to realize and certainly would admit, not admit, almost all businesses from small to large, in one way or another, have had varying numbers of people that made them what they are. I was thinking, and this is not insane, but I thought of an orchestra. Look at great orchestras that are noted by the orchestra leader. He gets up and waves his hand. He may not play an instrument out there. They make great music. they got a lot of people involved, and the only one that gets acknowledged is like Leonard Bernstein or someone. Businesses are kind of like that. The thing that's making all the music is all these people that are talented and trained. He's a guy up there like me with a big mouth or a hand waving a finger. And uh, we have to realize that all organizations have a lot of important people with them. Everything we have to do is a result of efforts of so many others. Success requires surrounding yourself with dedicated, talented, and trustworthy people. And following God's, God's guidebook, which is the Bible. First and most assured in my salvation and the resultant direction and influence of Almighty God, His Son Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the laws and teaching of His Word, the Bible, are number one influence in my life and to the ones around us. To the extent I miss His high calling and walk, everything falls short of what it could and should be every day because I don't, like most people, I don't stay as well as I could in it. I'm sure most of you for do for see I'm sure most of you do for discernment desire and willingness to stay in his will my wife and siblings and their families former teachers and many of these others and you can all think of this all the different people that 
We don't normally think of them. If you sit down and think about it, people have had an influence on your life. Most everybody can think of some teachers that did that. I wonder how many of you realize in the same, the same thing in your life. We all walk on the back of, to some degree of those who have gone before us. Thankfully, it's been possible in America heretofore a greatly blessed godly nation for, with freedoms and capitalism, capitalism which allowed individual initiative to flourish. We think that may be changing quite a bit now. This is a, a second lesson is about uh, hypocrisy. And it's about hypocrisy with somebody that didn't really think about it. We had a little revival at Snow Hill Baptist Church around 1950, more or less. A visiting preacher, I don't call his names, ate at different parish people, members' homes every night of the week. And uh, he made our house one night, and we were all eating at the table, and he drank so much tea, Mother finally made another pitcher and set it by his plate. He was, he was just drinking so much. Well, one of his sermons during the week was about things that should be avoided by Christians. And he named a lot of stuff, alcohol, smoking, tobacco, chewing tobacco, overeating, coffee. Do you know, strangely, he never mentioned tea. It's just that he never thought. Well, I thought I brought it up to Mother several years later. And I'd spoken at the time, but then several years later, she talked about him. I, so I was telling her what happened, and I said, it, I've never forgot that. He never realized what he was doing because he left that out. He just didn't even think about it included. When she told him, needless to say, he was perturbed at himself for not being aware of his totally unintended hypocrisy. I learned from that experience how necessary it is to self-check, I always say and do. Be sure we're not being hypocritical in a way we're not even realizing it. The last thing is about judging people. This was a West Texas story told to me by our former pastor who was raised up out of mule shoe, or he called it donkey boot. Uh, he said at a cafe one morning, it was the harvest season, I think, and likely on a Saturday, there were several farmers having breakfast along with the pastor who had just done the revival, and some of them asked him, said, how did your revival go? He said, well, not too well. We just had one little scrawny boy that was saved as all. After a whole week of services, obviously he couldn't have known what that scrawny little boy would become. Maybe you've heard of him before. His name was W.A. Criswell. Actually, he was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas for many years. Was a stalwart in the kingdom of God. But he started out, what I was telling Kyle, like Christ. You know, Isaiah said he was a scrawny little something that nobody desired. That's the way W.A. Criswell was. They pick, picture Christ in these pictures like some Adonis. Well, the Bible said he was somebody not to be desired. You had to have a heart for that. W.A. Crystal was that way, and the pastor never realized what a fruit he was bringing into the kingdom when he did that. I could go on and on with stories, but we just have so much time to do it. <coughs> it looks like I'm keeping up so far, Kyle, but I got quite a bit to go. <laughs> do you, I, I'm going to ask you do you recognize connections in your life? We were speaking about that a while ago. Uh, Jonathan Stickland, several years ago, maybe three or four years ago, he was at a fundraiser in Houston, and he said that he's going to be at a table with Sarah Palin and John and, uh, and Dinesh D'Souza. And I said, well, tell him to go high for us. He went and came back and said, well, Sarah Palin said, tell you and Bubba high. And Dinesh said, he loved you. And I said, he what? He said, he loved you. He said, you're one of the most connected people he's ever seen in his life. And I said, you know, Jonathan, that is true. I'm here, I'm 70-something years old, and I have never thought of that. But all of a sudden, in an instant, I could think back of hundreds of coincidences. And I, why is this happening or this? God was creating connections to use later. And I guarantee you, every one of you can think back and find connections that have been made. And if you're like me, you're blind and wasn't seeing them after the fact. <clears throat> Watch for them, because God works in our lives. That as Christians, I believe God makes connections in all of our lives to serve His purposes. Maybe you'll reflect back and see this situation differently from now on. This is something I wanted to really address today, so I'll left some of the other things off. Uh, so I believe the incredible events of the recent past and what appears to be the future here on this earth, because it doesn't. 
this thing here says help make America great again. I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe it will, but I don't believe it will. Said the incredible events of the past and what appears to be the future, and especially here in America, are clearly indicating the imminency of the rapture of the church. If the internet, if in the interest of time, I can't read the chapter, at the point of the book, first book of Romans, but the last half of the first chapter of Romans uh, is pretty in, pretty indicative of what's happening today. There's things mentioned there that you can use in your imagination. It says inventors of evil things and all kinds of things that are happening. So what I want to do is read an article that someone sent me last week. I don't know who the author is. It takes about five minutes. But he's speaking of today. And sometimes when he says you, he's not literally meaning us. This is his words. <coughs> and I, it's pretty clean. Only one place where he said that, I call it a rear end. He called it something else. But other than that, it's, it's pretty true. And when you hear this, and then if you go back home when you're in your office or wherever, and really read the last from 18 to 32 verses of Romans, you'll see we're living that today. Paul has told us. So we're not looking in the future and we're not thinking of something way out. We're living it today. And this world is never going to be the same again, I believe. There's things we need to do in the interest of shortness of time. We have to keep living, but there are things that Bubba said the other day, Dad, what do you do different? You're supposed to be ready all the time. I said, yeah, we are. But when you realize somebody's coming specifically, you are more than ready. You, you, you do things that you've been putting off, and you get ready. This said sadder words could not be written. It appears everything in Washington is crooked and on the tape. When we're talking about sin is rampant. It is. Not just Congress, but the FBI, the CIA, the Justice Department, the Pentagon, General, literally everyone in Washington, including most of those in the past administration. He didn't know who to clean out, and he trusted people that were not trustworthy. You know, cities are this way, counties are this way. There are embedded people there that have been for years that manipulate the ones that come in over them, so this has been a long time coming. The Prince of this earth has had a lot of leeway in what he's done. The only reason we are not taken is because we are, like I said, we're vaccinated against that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. All to the silicon, add to this the Silicon Valley and the social media, cable news, bias media, and foreign invention, intervention. These groups all amalgamated to become what we keep hearing of as the deep state. President Trump didn't have a chance. He walked into this mess four years ago and tried to clean the swamp. But the swamp monster ate him alive, piece by piece, starting on day one. Or fortunately, his actions over the past few weeks in disputing the election had a small role for the events at the Capitol. The media made it like he was speaking evil of things that weren't true when we know they were true. All the good he did over the past four years was wiped away, and the media caused that. He's a marked man for the rest of his life, so where does he go now? Where can he live? What is the impact on his family? As one top general said yesterday, probably a month ago, he's a great leader without a country. The changes that are coming will have time to affect senior citizens and impact their children and grandchildren. I don't really think this guy is considering the rapture of the church. I think he's thinking we're just going to go on and on, and it is for a while maybe. It may stop today. I don't think it will, but he's going to come quickly. So now you understand there was never any action against why there was none against the Clintons or Obama. How they destroyed emails and evidence and phones and servers. How they spied and wiretapped. How they lied to the FISA court. They had conversations on the tarmac. They sent emails to cover their fanny. He didn't say that. After key meetings, how Comey and Brennan and Clapper never were taught to brought to any justice. Those three all worked in concert with three different organizations doing evil. How the FBI and CIA lied, how the Steele dossier was passed along, how phones got factory reset. That's something there when you when you control the government and all, you can turn all the phones off or on or reset the ones you want to, and they did. They reset phones and wiped out all the information on them remotely. How leak after leak to an accomplished media went unchecked, 
why George Soros is always in the shadows, why they screamed Russia and pushed a sham impeachment, why no one ever goes to jail, why no one is ever charged, why nothing ever happened. Of course, we, we understand because Isaiah, and Isaiah, he said, good will be called evil and evil will be called good. I mean, if we're not realizing that today, then we must be asleep. Why there was no wrongdoing in the Pfizer warrants, why their Durham report was delayed, that had to do with Hunter, if you remember. Why Hunter would walk scot free, said, and this is his word, diaper wearing Joe will give the whole family a pardon. Why the FBI sat on the laptop, and we know they had it for months and knew what was in it. Why the Biden's connection to China was overlooked, and then they unleashed the perfect weapon, a virus that could be weaponized politically to bring down the greatest economy ever and usher in an unverifiable mail-in voting. Now that wasn't just ushered in because that's been happening over Odessa for 30 years. It just didn't happen on this scale and big. Little places have had it. About three or four elections ago, they said every county in Texas had overvote. That means fraud. People didn't address it. We've been warned and we didn't address it. Why the media is 24-7 propaganda and lies, why up is down and down is up, right is wrong and wrong is right. And like the Bible said, good is evil and evil is good. Why social media silences the First Amendment and speaks over the President of the United States. This has been planned by the deep state all along. They didn't expect Trump to win in 2016. He messed up their plan, it delayed it a little. They weren't about to let it happen again. They went right to work. We didn't. We probably took vacations. I don't know why Democrats are so bold and Republicans are so reserved. It's uh, maybe I, I'm looking, I, I call myself Republican. Maybe I need to be more out. I'm realizing some of this. I just, I mean, it's like abortion. You think, well, I could have done something else. I did whatever it was. We wound up with something we wish we didn't have. This has been a plan by the deep state all along. They didn't expect Trump to win in 2016, so he messed their plans up and they weren't gonna have it again, so COVID-19 was weaponized. We were talking a while ago where that was in China. I think it started in America. I think there's a lot of different ones involved. This world has collusion all the way around it. So we think this country did it or this country, usually there's somebody in all of them involved. Said the media helped shame and kill the economy and super lucky unverifiable mail-in ballot were just a trick to make sure the career politician, allegedly with hands in Chinese payroll, that could not even finish a sentence or collect a crowd, miraculously he became the most popular vote recipient of all time. I guess if you're gonna stuff ballots, you can just keep on. Paper must be cheap. You've just witnessed a coup, and I've seen it called that by several. Said the overthrow of the U.S. free election system, the end of our constitutional republic, and the decline of capitalism into the slide towards socialism. What will happen next? Now you wonder, is it that bad? Well, if we don't stop fraudulent voting, it is that bad. That's, that's happened in Russia for many years. Uh, Stalin said one time he didn't care who voted, where they voted, when they voted, all he counted cared was if he counted the votes. That's what counts. Said, expect the borders to open up. This must have been written two or three weeks ago because I think they're wide open now. This is like a sieve down there with the whole screen cut out of it and they're just pouring in. Y'all know here in Midland because you got several hundred of them in the last day or two here in Midland. Dallas has got them. I've been looking for them to come stick some in my barn. You don't know where they're gonna go next. You're looking for increased immigration. Expect agencies like CBP and INS and Homeland Security to be muzzled or maybe even deleted. Law enforcement will see continued defunding. Electoral college will be gone. They, they're working hard on that. History erased will be erased and they're doing that. They're trying to, they're doing the schools and rewriting the books. Taking statues down is one thing they want to take away. There's real history and there's perceived history, and if you don't know what the real history is, you believe perceived history to be right. So that's what they're trying to do on a new generation that take away anything they can see that tells them how things really happened. So your Second Amendment will be attacked. 
the Supreme Court would be packed. Probably two justices could be removed. Said if you have a manufacturing job or an oil industry job, for those of you who know, this is his opinion, get ready. If you run a business, brace for impact. And we heard to this morning several things they're doing, taking corporate income tax from 21 to 28. They got all kind of regulation. I mean, they're not even going taking off Saturdays and Sundays. I don't think evil is it never sleeps. Your taxes are going to go up, and we were told that today. Business will pay more, and I could go on and on. There's no real recovery. The elections from now on will be decided by New York, Illinois, and California. That's probably not surprising to say that, because that's probably what will happen. The republic will be dead. Mob rule and appeasement will run rampant. The candidate who offers the most from the treasury will get the most votes. But the votes voted won't matter, just the ones received and counted. The president had been set. The, the precedent had been set. Benjamin Franklin was walking out of Independence Hall after the Constitutional Convention in 1787, and someone asked him, a lady I think I heard, said, Dr. Franklin, what are you giving us, a republic or a monarch? And he said, I'll give you a republic if you can keep it. I've said that many times over the years, and we see our republic drifting away. I've tried to get people to read an article I had about republics and democracy written by Robert Welch, who formed the John Birch Society. It's the best I've ever written, about 13 pages. And he tells how democracies always get do what's happening to us. People start voting in people that will give them the most, and your republic just floats away. We still have a vestige of it in our Pledge of Allegiance. One nation under God. Well, I didn't ever even like that way that said. It was all nations are under God. I wish it had said one nation recognizing God or declaring God because God is over every nation whether they realize it or not. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, you will now lose your republic. You turn from God. You turn from family. You turn from country. You embrace degeneracy culture. You celebrated and looked to food. You worshiped yourself selfishly as you took for granted what men have died to give to you. Boy, that's the truth. People now are starting to recognize more of the troops and what they've done, but maybe it's too little too late. But you know, we talk about the spirit, hallelujah, we're ready. We're talking about the flesh, it's gonna be rough. That's one reason we all need to make sure you have your ticket out here. Said you disregarded history and took all it and all that it taught. On your watch, America just died a little. Likely she'll never be the same again. Some of you have no idea what you've done. Sadly, some do. Who has the guts to share this message to your friends? You need to do that. This said, a lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by men majority. That was Booker T. Washington. He's a lot smarter than a lot of people today because people hear something and they, that's what they start thinking is this must be true because everybody believes it. If you follow everybody, you're probably going to go to hell. If you follow Jesus Christ, you're going another way. And unfortunately, there's going to be less go that way than there are that stay here on this earth. Some who believe the rapture may be far off, I totally disagree. I think the Bible teaches it will happen at or very close to the end of a 6,000 year period. And that will leave a 7,000 year, a thousand year period of the seventh, which will be the millennium on the earth or the Shabbat or Sabbath. Most, including myself, thought for many years that 6,000 years started at creation. And that's the reason when we passed 2,000, I think, well, when are we going to be raptured, you know? We, got, we don't know exactly, but now we're two decades past said somebody got something wrong and it's not God, it's us. Well, a guy sent a thing out and one of the doctors that I have in love with <coughs> sent me a thing called the Bereshit Prophecy. It breaks down, the Hebrew scholar breaks down the first word in the Bible. In the beginning, it's called Bereshit. And he breaks that down and he says, that's the reason I'm giving you a little hint of it. I hope everybody will get a copy or leave me their email or something and I'll send you this link. It's very interesting to watch. It's about an hour long. And, and it says, it indicates that 6,000 years started at the cross. He went back 4,000 years. And 4,000 years was at 3970 BC. 
He thinks that's when Adam sinned. Of course, he, would, he thinks Adam was 33 and a half years old. He's the first Adam. The last Adam, the Bible tells us, was Christ. He was 33 and a half years old. So he's probably right on those numbers. He did more detail than what I'm stating. But why would God have determined to destroy the earth to have the 7,000 years and then destroy it with fire when he just put a man on the earth that was sinless? There was no sin on earth at all until Adam and Eve sinned. Then in a hurry, he said, we need to get them out of the Garden of Eden in a hurry. If they don't, they eat off that other tree, they're going to live forever. So they could live forever eating off of that tree. It looked like, all that's to say it looked like that's right. And that, So if you go from the cross now, 2,000 years more for this dispensation we're in. Some of you may not know dispensational teaching and all, so I don't know who all I'm talking to that understands or doesn't, but this is the way I believe it. And... 2,000 years goes to the year 2030. Hey, that's not 10 years from now. And we know the Bible says there's going to be a tribulation on the earth for seven years. A bad one for three and a half and a way, way worse one for the last three and a half. Well, that means it'll have to start sometime about 23. So, time is short. You may want to wait your kids to all get grown, but I got news for you. Your kids aren't going to get grown unless they're doing it here on the earth. I don't know the precise time, but he is telling us we are in those days and we need to be thinking about it and think he's one of us. What do we need to do? Uh, this is not way out. And that people would say today, well, they've been saying he's going to come for years. It can happen any time, which it could have. But the thing about it is it's going to happen within that 6,000 years right at the end. And that's, we are right at the end. So I that's, that's the way I see it. Kyle, that's most of what I had. Um, if anybody had any questions about any of it, I probably got opinion about everything and answer for nothing. That's kind of the way it is. So, anyway, I, I think it's very important that we, that we uh, consider the time we're in. Signs are certainly all around us. That's my little flashlight. They fixed me up, thankfully, here. Yep. They, they hold ran, on, hold on, Dick. Yeah. Do you guys, hey, let's give Dick a round of applause.